Hello everyone, it's Chaplain April and I am doing a series on faith. So this is going to be the first video in our series. What I want to tell you is if you think you don't have faith, you are mistaken because everyone has faith. The question is, what are we putting our faith in? That's really the question. What and who are we putting our faith in? How is it that you already have faith? You have faith because when you get up in the morning, you know that it's daytime. The sun is going to be out. You can breathe air. Those are things that you already have faith in. You, you have faith in gravity. You know that if you throw something up, it's going to come down. Um, there's a lot of things that you already have faith in. So as far as people in your life, now that's another question. I mean, who do you trust? Who do you have faith in? Because when I look at the scripture that uh, we're looking at today, Matthew 17, 20 is our key verse for today. And it says, he replied, he being Yeshua, Jesus, because you have so little faith, truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible to you. And I have some mustard seeds here. I ordered these specifically for this, although you can use these for things like brining or pickling but I want to show you what a mustard seed looks like that is a mustard seed right there okay look how tiny that is these are all mustard seeds and just one mustard seed of these can grow a huge tree I'm going to put a photo of a mustard tree up here so you can see it just from that little tiny seed. Now any seed, any seeds are small. There's smaller seeds than that, that I planted the other day. Little lettuce seeds are really small. But the point is the verse tells us that if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, nothing will be impossible to you. How is that? So when I was reading um, our scripture, I'm reading it in the complete Jewish study Bible. It uses the word trust. So I'm going to read it in this Bible for you. He said to them, because you have such little trust. Yes, I tell you that if you have trust as tiny as a mustard seed, you will be able to say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Indeed, nothing will be impossible for you. So whenever the word was translated, they used the word faith. But as you can see, faith and trust are interchangeable. So when you have faith in someone, you trust them. So you may not have faith in God, right? You may say, um, I don't believe, I don't have faith. It's because you don't yet trust God. You don't understand God. You don't know that he is um, the Alpha and the Omega, Omega, the beginning and the end you know, love, that he is a good God. Um, you may not know all of those things. So you, you need to know someone's characteristics, right? Before you can trust them. So even with a friend, um, even family members, you think you might trust and they could still betray you. So who and what do you put your trust in? Um, in this verse, uh, the, the disciples are trying to cast out a demon from someone. So we're not really going to use go there. Um, we're going to talk more about how to grow your faith because you can grow your faith because when you, when you grow your faith, okay, we're talking about what faith is first. Okay. So faith is confidence in what we hope for for an assurance about what we do not see. That is Hebrews 1.1. 1, 1. So let's go to Hebrews and look this up here because I want to get this other translation. So that again is the NIV, but I also want to get a different translation because 
that's the thing with the Bible. A lot of words were translated because we're talking about original languages being Aramaic, Greek, Hebrew, and ancient. So Jesus spoke Aramaic, but was the ancient Aramaic. So whenever you're translating words, you know, and you're translating into a modern language like English, that's when people say that, oh, it's disingenuous or things were mistranslated. It's not really that. It's that um, you have to go back to what was the meaning in the time that it was written. What did it actually mean then? And get that to the meaning now. It's the meaning of the word. So, so what was I? I was looking for Hebrews 1.1. 1, 1. Okay. So here again, it says trusting. Trusting is being confident in what we hope for, convinced about things we do not see. So the way I've always heard it growing up is faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. So that's what faith is. It's, it's a confidence in knowing that we can trust someone and trust in something. There's this saying out there, well, you've got to activate your faith. You know, so we'll talk about growing your faith, but right now we're just talking about what faith is. And I don't want to say how to activate it, but it's kind of like you tap into your faith. So, so there's, there's like this spiritual feeling that you get whenever you tap in. So, so you tap into your spiritual side you know, you're, you're always kind of in your natural, kind of in the natural because we live in the natural. So you have to tap into your spiritual. I've talked about that before, but with faith, it's kind of like you're tapping into your faith. So like when I pray for someone, like my dad had a healing ministry and people's backs would get healed, their legs, things like that. And so he kind of had an anointing for that sort of specific particular thing but he still had to tap into his faith. So he had, he trusted it when he would, I, I was always amazed when I would watch him um, praying for someone for, for their backs to be healed and their arms and legs and things like that. But he knew that because he had that anointing for it and it had happened so many times before, he trusted that the next time that he prayed for someone with a back problem or whatever it was that they were going to be healed. He trusted that. And I have actually struggled with that because I do pray for people at the hospital. Well, that's my job. I pray for people at the hospital all the time. I don't know, always ask for healing because of people's different beliefs and things like that. But if someone believes and they want healing, I will pray for healing. Uh, that's another, that's another discussion that'll give us, get us off track if I go on that little rabbit trail right now. But, um, I don't, I can tell that I don't always have the faith, um, you know, that a certain thing will happen. There are times when I can tell that I have, that I have the faith. I don't even know how to explain it. But, but here Jesus is telling us we only have to have the faith of a mustard seed. So if you feel like your faith is very small or it's very little, you can grow your faith. Okay. And, and I think that's because we need faith for different things and bigger things and all of that. But you only need a little bit of faith for the common, you know, everyday things. So faith gives us the ability to face overwhelming challenges. Okay. And moving mountains. So in that verse, he talks about moving mountains that represents the obstacles, the difficulty, difficulties that we face. Faith enables us to confront these challenges, trusting that God's power will make the impossible possible. So, so a mountain is just anything in your life that's a, a big obstacle, okay? Let's say you need 
Okay, this story just came to me. I'm going to I'm going to talk about it. Um, Kevin Zadai, who I, I watch him, he is a minister. He's on the It's Supernatural Network. He has his own show. And then he also has another show that he does. But I love it when he speaks on ISN because it's more like a sermonette and it's just really good. But he, he, shared, he shared a time when he was in college and he did not have the money to pay for his schooling and he prayed he prayed and asked god and so here's another time where you're quote unquote he activated his faith he trusted he said lord i don't know how i'm going to pay for this um but i need you to come through for me this is a true story and you can see it on his on his youtube channel and he gave that bill to god so he just put his trust in God with that bill. And he said, I know you're going to do it. I don't know how, but you will. I kid you not. Somebody called the school. Somebody was in prayer one day, a prayer warrior. And this we can call part of the hidden ones. You know, the hidden ones are God's elect, God's, uh, God's righteous army that's out there um a chaplain friend of mine said you know there's godly people in every walk of life you just have to seek them out or find them like there's godly people everywhere but you don't always know who is a godly person so someone was in prayer one day some business guy and and the holy spirit actually gave him kevin zadai's name and said, I want you to pay his bill. So he called around to different colleges and found out where he was studying and paid the bill for him. So that was a trust that Kevin had. He knew he was supposed to go to, to, to school. He couldn't pay for it. And God came through for him. So that's a level of trust. If you understand who God is and you know who God is and you know he's there for you and he's going to provide for you and he's going to do all the things, then you can have that confidence about it. Um, and Kevin did. So, so we have faith for different things like, okay, we have faith that we're going to get up in the morning and we'll be able to breathe. There's oxygen, right? There's, there's oxygen available to us. But we may not have faith that, you know, if we lose our job, we're going to find another one or something like that. So trust is built, right? So you have to build your trust in God and you have to nurture your faith so your faith grows. So like a seed, faith must be nurtured. So how do you nurture your faith? It's through study of the word of God, prayer um living in obedience all of that grows nurtures your faith so that it can grow so if you're praying you're nurturing that faith that seed the little mustard seed you're nurturing it you're praying you're saying to god okay i know that these are your characteristics and i know that you don't change because the bible says you don't change and your characteristics are never going to change. So if I, if, if I could ever give you 100% on anything, you can 100% believe in God that he will not change and that he will come through for you. Okay, so if you feel like you don't have faith, I'm here to tell you that you absolutely do have faith because the Bible tells us in Romans 12, 3, and this is Paul, God has distributed to each one a measure of faith. This suggests that faith is something we all have in varying amounts and it's given by God. So faith is a gift that God gives us and he gives us all a measure of faith. So there's no way for me to know how much faith you have and there's probably no way for you to know how much faith I have, but we all have a measure of faith. We have to tap into that faith. So faith is not something that we create on our own. It's a gift. Um, some faith may be stronger than others. And then also you can grow your faith. So we'll look at that in, an, in another video. 
but you do you have a measure of faith especially if you are a child of god if you have given your life to christ okay so the distinction that i was that i needed to make is that there's a general faith and there is a saving faith so when i was talking earlier about the fact that you have faith in a lot of things that's a general faith that we have just from living you know things that we know and trust are going to happen so the saving faith is what i'm talking about is the measure of faith that god gives us for salvation so when we wants us all to come to faith in christ so then we, learning to trust in God and, and Christ as his son. So that's the saving faith. The Bible teaches that faith is necessary for self. The faith necessary for salvation is a gift from God. So, you know, Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it's the gift of God, not by work, so that no one can boast. So if saving faith is the kind that lead, the kind that leads to salvation and a relationship with Jesus as a gift, this faith is specifically given to those who come to believe in Christ, meaning it is for Christians. There is a sense in which all people can exercise some level of general faith, even if it's not faith in Christ. People can have faith in everyday things, trusting that the sun will rise, that a chair will hold them up, or that a plane will safely take them to their destination. However, this type of faith is not the same as the spiritual saving faith that the Bible speaks of. While everyone may have the capacity for some kind of general faith, the specific measure of faith mentioned in Romans 12, 3, and the gift of saving faith in Ephesians 2, 8 are both directed towards Christians. So God desires for us all to have faith in Christ. So in order for that to be, you know, people talk about a leap of faith. So when you are getting saved, when the day that you become saved, you know, that you ask Christ into your heart, that might be what they call a leap of faith for you because you want to believe, you want to trust that God is who he says he is and that those characteristics are so good and all of that. So when you take that leap of faith, then that is also growing your faith. It's going to grow your faith. Because you're going to find out that you took a good leap. You know, it's like ri a risk that you felt like you were taking. You know, when you land there, you find out that God does do what he says he's going to do. He does hold up his promises. He does hold up his end of the bargain, you know, as they say. And um, he does come through for us. What would the negative of the risk be? Because if it doesn't turn out to be true you're not going to lose anything, right? So anyway, so that's a leap of faith that you take probably in the moment of salvation. For me, I didn't really see it that way. I just kind of had a knowing, but I'm kind of a knower anyway. <laughs> so I knew that God is who he said he was. I already knew that, like I already had it. I just couldn't wait to come to him fast enough. So what I'm trying to say is that everyone has a capacity for faith. And so if, for example, if someone on the earth or they were raised by a not so good father, then they're going to have a little bit probably more difficulty believing that father God is who he says he is. You know, they're going to have a little bit more di difficulty trying, putting their trust in him because their earthly father didn't come through for them. So then in that instance, that is going to be more of a leap. And you're going to have to trust what other people are telling you, what the Bible says about it, and then jump in. And then when you realize that they were tr right, and that it was true, your faith will grow. And then you will have even more faith, you know, but then that becomes a saving faith.
So then your general faith kind of goes into a saving faith where then now you have faith in Christ. So someone that is a mature Christian, their faith is probably their faith in Christ is extremely strong and well developed because they have they've tested it, you know. And I'm not saying that you test God, but you 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 kind of faith grows through using it and through testing. While we start with some measure of faith, right? The little mustard seed. We start with that. Um, then it can grow as we continue to trust God and experience his faithfulness. So Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. I want to save this for the other video, but our faith deepens as we hear the word of God, pray, see him work in our lives. And when trials and challenges come, they stretch our faith and make us stronger, but then our faith grows. So it grows through using it and also testing it. So faith is like a muscle. It grows when we exercise it. So that's another word that we could use instead of activating it or maybe even tapping into it because I think you have to tap into it at some point. But when we exercise it and we rely on God in different situations, our trust in him deepens. So back to our story from Kevin Kevin Zadai, he his faith was strengthened even more, even though he already trusted God to take care of that bill for him. Whenever this all happened, and he he tells the story when he came to ask about his bill or whatever and talking to the administration about it, they told him, Kevin, your um, entire tuition has been paid. Imagine how that strengthened his faith all the more and gave it a lot of strength. So he tested it by leaving it with God. It's kind of like when you say, leave it at the foot of the cross. You take your petition to the cross. It's kind of like taking it to the, the, the wailing wall in Israel. When my mentor and I went, we took prayers and we put them in the crevices of the wailing wall. They don't call it the wailing wall now, but the, 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 you know, that's what it is, is where people go and pray and they're bringing their petitions to God. And so he brought the petition, put it there and left it. So you have to leave your petition there, but give it to God and not get anxious about it and worry about it because if you're worried about it and anxious about it then you haven't really left it there so you leave it there and then you trust so and that's where this faith and trust is going to grow when you test it you leave it there at the foot of the cross at the wailing wall at wherever you know in figuratively at the cross that's giving it to God, not worrying about it and stressing about it, having anxiety about it is actually giving it to him so that he can now take the petition and start working on it. So what I tell people is that when we pray about something, we tap into our faith, right? We pray, we say, okay, wait a minute. God is who he says he is and he doesn't fail. So that's another video, right? Where God doesn't fail. Um, we give that petition to God with all of those elements in it and leave it there. And then when God comes through for us, our faith is not only validated and, you know, we feel all of a sudden like, wow, okay, we can trust. And sometimes it surprises us still, even even people like me that I know that God is faithful and I know that he is who he says he is and I know that I can trust him. It's still, it's just like an exhilarating thing whenever he answers one of our prayers. I tell people that when we pray, God starts working immediately on that prayer. Some prayers 
you know, we're, we're, we're a microwave society and we want our prayers answered stat, you know, yesterday, you know, 10 seconds or five seconds. It may not always work that way. And I've, I've explained it like chess pieces, you know, it's like a chess board and God is dealing with all these different elements, different people, different elements, different situations, things that are happening. He's asking people to do things and some of them are not answering. Some of them are not responding to the call. Some of them aren't saying no, they don't want to do it. So then he has to find someone else. So God is moving all these chess pieces in the background that we don't see. God is always working in the background of your life. Always. Even if you feel like you have this little trust in him, but if you tap into that trust and that faith, in that faith um, and, and, and give the petition to God and believe, <clears throat> then you will see that through using it and testing it, that that will grow your faith in a great, great way. So it starts out as a small little mustard seed. And then with that little mustard seed is enough to move that mountain, that mountain of that trial in your life, that problem in your life, that thing that you're not sure that you can get past, or you're not sure that um, there can be made a way for God will make a way. And he will come through and then your faith will be stronger. And then the next time you'll be able to believe God in a, in, in an even more, uh, for something even more complex, you know, you'll be able to ask for something else that's even bigger. You know, um, I watched, uh, when I was at Joyce Meyer, uh, con conference one time, I saw Lisa Bevere speak. And she said, we have, you know, a lot of times really puny prayers and we can barely believe for those prayers, you know, for those petitions. But we should be giving God really bold, big prayers and petition him for things that would blow our minds. And if we can get there, we can take these little steps, you know, and believe God that this, this is going to happen, that will happen. Now, it doesn't always happen the way that we think it should because he is going to do it his way. And, you know, he uses things to confound the wise. You know, he likes to do it his way. He's not going to do it someone else's way. And he might use someone or something that you could never think of or imagine. But he will come through. So it is a journey. Faith is a continuous journey journey but all you need to start out is a is a little mustard seed and you have that seed because you already have a general faith and then if you put that faith in christ then you have a spiritual faith now that starts out maybe like a little mustard seed but the more you use it the more you nurture it and the more you you test it the more it will grow so stay tuned because i'm gonna have probably three parts to this series because faith is huge faith is a big topic and there's no way i can do it in one video but i just want you to remember that faith is i want you to remember that a mustard seed is small but mighty and I want you to think of having faith like a mustard seed. And if you have, even have faith even as small as a mustard seed, you can move the mountain in your life. So take care and I'll see you in the next video.